And number one, drum roll. What is it? Nice little snapper. No, what's number one? <laughs> hey. Heart is on the ocean. My dreams are made of soul. And girl, you'll be my first mate on the ocean. Along with pirates and sharks, one of the most common questions we get asked are what are our favourite places to sail? So we've managed to narrow it down to five and we're going to tell you all about it while we take you for a sail. So enjoy. Beautiful sailing conditions today, 10 to 15 knots of wind, dead flat water. Yeah, so if you're looking at maybe buying a boat and you don't know what area to start looking in, or yeah, thinking about chartering out a boat and you don't know where to go, this video is kind of for you. Or if you just want to come for a sail with us and be entertained for 12 or so minutes. <laughs> you good? <laughs> you good? I'm Elena and this is Riley, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Let's start with number five, Tonga. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay now. There's not too many places where you're actually guaranteed to swim with a whale. The locals are very respectful, they keep their distance. You can't go in your own boat, but you can organise to go on a tour and um, that's a lot of fun. So what happens is the humpbacks migrate there to give birth to their young. So um, that's why it's so regular and you know that you're definitely gonna come across them. Satisfied with his normal time. There's 176 islands and only 36 of them are inhabited. So you can get as remote as you would like to. A lot of the sailing is very protected and there's also a direct flight there from Australia, which makes it a bit easier to get to as well. Number four is going to be Greece, the Greek islands. It would have probably been ranked higher on the list, but because of the Meltemi wind, it blows like 40 knots through the summer. Uh, it was pushed down the list to number four. But yeah, still one of our favorite places to sail because that is the place that Riley and I first met. You could be the king of the mountain Obviously the food is amazing, the tomatoes there I swear are the best in the world, you eat them like strawberries. The stuffed squid are pretty good too. It's really cheap to sail there if you want to leave your boat there for the winter, marinas are cheaper, uh, getting hauled out is cheaper, it's just yeah, one of the cheaper places in the Mediterranean so that's a bonus. And to sail somewhere, drop the anchor and go to shore and explore some ancient ruins. There's just enough history and culture there to last a lifetime. Can't go wrong with Greece. Definitely go to Crete too, we really love the island of Crete. It's a big long one down the bottom. Pretty windy there. It's very windy. Very windy, be warned. Yeah. The Whit Sundays! Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, pretty hard to go past. We did a bare boat charter there whilst we were waiting for our paperwork to go through for this boat in France and just had a really nice time. That was actually probably one of the best sails I've done. It 
It's got Whitehaven Beach. It's got the Great Barrier Reef there. Obviously, the fishing is going to be really good. It's like the beautiful, clear water that all of the places that I'm going to mention today will have. It can cater to everyone. So there's a party to be had at Airlie Beach, but you can also shoot off for those of us who have become more wise over the years to more secluded beaches and anchorages and stuff like that. Everything's just a day sail away and uh, it's pretty good. I actually think I recommend hiring a boat before buying. You're lucky that you didn't get seasick. Yeah, I don't know. I was pretty confident that it would be okay, but maybe I was lucky. Yeah, so there's a list of places that you could hire a boat if you're interested in doing that before buying. And yeah, we wanted to say huge thanks to the Moorings because we teamed up with them for this episode. They're a boat chartering company worldwide and it's their 50th year anniversary as of this year. We found that the marine industry is a particularly tough nut to crack. They really uh... are. Hello. Hi. Hi. You've reached the marine industry. Hi. Yeah. Hi, look, uh, I'm a, I'm actually a social media influencer. I use your product every single day. We really, really love it. What we'd like to do is to try to just be able to tell people exactly how much we use it, how much we love it. A what? You're a what, dear? A social influencer. Oh, okay, just give me one moment. Gary! What? Got a young chap on the phone, says he's a social influenza. A what? A social Influenza! Tell them we don't want to get involved. No, I don't get sick of these influenzas. Everyone's getting sick. I'm of sorry, time. dear. We aren't able to help you with your influenza, but may I suggest you visit a doctor? I know a great one down the road. His name is Bernard. But anyway, well done, Mooring. Thank you very much. Yeah, and they were nice enough to even give you guys a discount. So hang around for that. Anyway, number two. Number two, Los Roques. These are the islands above Venezuela. It's an archipelago of islands. Most of these islands are uninhabited. I think all but one. The locals are so friendly. They welcome you into the community. We're actually there during Christmas time and the village of, you know, a few hundred people had all come together. It was just really cool to see such a tight-knit community and to be a part of it for a few weeks or so. The village is so picturesque. They're all like colourful little beach shacks. We took a million photos and videos. And before we went to Los Roques, we did like almost no research. We spent a few days sailing there and we didn't really know what to expect. Someone just said it was awesome. We actually researched more on Los Roques as we were sailing the night before we hadn't slept and what we saw was like it looked super expensive but we were just reading the currency wrong it's probably the cheapest place we've ever sailed it'd probably be comparable to Asia the diesel is pretty much free and from just a few hundred US dollars uh, we had a mountain of cash but yeah the food is cheap the drinks are cheap people are lovely the water is super clear and if you're into kite surfing or windsurfing, this place is awesome because it's really protected but you get the trade winds. Some cool things to see underwater, a lot of lobster and just all around good time. Hey! <laughs> so we just wanted to have a quick chat about the moorings with you. Uh, they're a highly reputable boat chartering company which is why we're happy to share their services with you. So if you're interested in maybe hiring a boat, stick around. Before everyone switches off, we can get you a 10% discount. If you use our code SLV19, the link to which is in the description below. So if you're gonna get a boat, obviously you can hire one wherever you'd like to go. The Moorings boats are scattered all over the world. I think maybe four of the places we listed, they have the Moorings boats. So you can fly to any of the locations that they have. You can fly to the Bahamas, you can go to the Mediterranean. In any tropical location, you can nary swing a dead cat without hitting a Moorings boat. Seriously, they're everywhere. <laughs> There's a wreck over there. Yeah? See that? Oh yeah, sick. Yeah. Maybe we can go check that out. Just trying to find some land for me. Well Riley and I just finished arguing about the drone. <laughs> I refused to catch that drone by myself. But anyway, I flew it over that reef and it looks more like a reef than a shipwreck, so anyway we're about to jump in the dinghy and go and check it out. Are you excited?
We still haven't told you what our number one place to sail is yet. So we'll do that very soon. If you're wondering how we snorkel together with a baby, we don't. <laughs> we have to take turns. So Riley's in the water now with my spear gun, with my pole spear, and then we're gonna switch. Why didn't you film anything? It was a big barracuda, <laughs> huge, and it was aggressive. So I ran away. <laughs> Drum roll! What is it? Nice little snapper. No, what's number one? Hey. <laughs> number one is, you guessed it, the Bahamas! <laughs> Water is like nowhere else I've been, bar maybe one or two places in the Pacific, um, and maybe Bonaire alone. Yeah. The way you can sail flat out in just two metres of water and know that it's going to be like that for the entire length of the bank, and you can have a spinnaker up and you can be going at 15 knots, um, that is pretty breathtaking. This is a bit of a technical one but because of the amount of ciguatera with uh, reef fish in the Pacific I think that that's a big plus for the Bahamas because it's much less prevalent you just can't eat groper you can't eat snapper um, anything Pacific, at all like yeah. that in the in the Chiwamotos so that's another massive plus for the Bahamas so yeah when you're trying to go a long way towards living off the land, being able to hunt those reef fish and bring them in, bring them home and eat them, that's pretty important because you can't be going after pelagic fish all the time, not with a little kid around. It's in the particular spot where you get nice wind from the southeast pretty much the whole year apart from hurricane season. Even then, that wouldn't stop me from booking a charter, I don't think. Nah, and we spent the whole hurricane season here last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It which can we've be got done. a video on. You can sort of go, you can go as remote as you like. You can go to islands where they're just, there's probably no one's been for ever. Like, they're, yeah, they're little ones off to the untouched. side, but yeah, it's incredible how, how untouched it is. I was blown away. I was not expecting this to be, I was not expecting really to like it very much at all. And certainly for there to be no fish. Do you want to tell everyone what happened with my spear gun? I uh, jammed it into part of the wreck. So I lost, I had to unscrew it and lost the tip. Hiring a boat anywhere will be super easy because you just fly into your location. If I use the Bahamas as an example, if you want to do it cheap, you book a catamaran for eight people, it would be a 40 footer and the price for seven days will be $4,357, which divided by eight, ridiculously cheap. If you want to upgrade a bit from that, you go a 48 foot boat with four cabins and then the price will work out per person to just under a grand. Very, very reasonable price for the holiday that you're getting. And if you're not feeling confident, you also have the option to hire a mooring skipper and a chef as well, if you're not confident in the kitchen. <laughs> if you want to do the bare boat sailing, you'll have to provide evidence that you've been on a comparable size sailing boat before or power boat. And if you're thinking of chartering in the Mediterranean, you'll need to provide um, sailing certification. Several different options there. If you're not interested in sailing, they've got the power cats and obviously you can choose a catamaran or a monohull. Lots of choices. Many, many choices. Would you say a plethora? Yes. 
because I would not like it if someone told me that they had a plethora and then later on find out that that person has no idea what it means to have a plethora. What is that about? El guapo. Could it be that once again you are angry at someone else and trying to take it out on me? <laughs> I think like we've said before, exploring a location by boat is just vastly different to anything you would have done on land. It gives you this whole new perspective on a place. So our promo code will be in the description below, but what is it? SLV19. You must book before December 31st. You must. Elaine has ordered it. She's you decreed must. it thus. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little episode we put together. Um, it was really fun going through all of our old footage, actually. Lenny! All right, I didn't dinner do that. time. I'm dinner glad time. you had fun. Enjoy your boat trips. <laughs> Would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? <laughs>